when Stephen King wrote the novel Christine, which tells the story of a cow possessed by malevolent supernatural forces, it was a fictitious horror story. But like haunted houses, it appears that vehicles too can become possessed. The following are four stories where vehicles took on a life of their own. Archduke Ferdinand's car. It is common knowledge that World War I started when Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir apparent to the Austro-Hungarian throne and his wife, was shot in their car by a Bosnian anarchist in the Bosnian Herzegovinian capital of Sarajevo. But what people are possibly unaware of is that earlier that day, there had already been an attempt on his life and he was on his way to the hospital to visit the people that had been injured when an anarchist called Nadelko Gabrinovich threw a grenade at their moving car. The bomb detonated behind them, injuring occupants in the car behind. The second attempt on his life was more successful when his vehicle, a 1910 Graf and Stift open-top touring car, had stalled in the street where another shooter, 19-year-old Gavrilo Princip, walked out of a nearby cafe and assassinated both the Duke and his wife. But this haunted story is not centred around the Duke and his wife, but on the vehicle that was shot in. After the car was repaired, it was brought by an Austrian general by the name of Poturek. A few days after driving the vehicle, it lost his mind and went insane. The next owner was a governor from the recently created state of Yugoslavia, who had four accidents in the car, including the loss of his arm. He got rid of the car, claiming it was cursed. He sold the car to a surgeon friend of his on a dare, then only six months later had lost his life when he'd flipped the car over and was crushed in the accident. The vehicle was then owned by a German army captain who lost his life when he swerved to avoid two pedestrians and hit a tree. Unfortunately, the pedestrians also lost their lives. After the car was again repaired, it was purchased by a Swiss racing driver who also perished in the car. This litany of disasters would continue until 1926, where it claimed even more lives. The last person to ever own the car was a Romanian garage owner by the name of Tiber Hirschfeld. As he was driving the vehicle to a wedding with five friends, it suddenly spun out of control and crashed, killing all but one on board. All in all, the limousine was owned by 15 different people and was involved in six accidents and 13 deaths. You may also want to include the millions of people who perished in the war, as this was the vehicle that started World War I, in which the Archduke was assassinated. The vehicle ended up in the War History Museum of Vienna, where it stands to this day. I doubt anyone would be game enough to take it out for a drive. Renault Magane The following quirky story took place in South Africa in 2004 when the engine of a Renault Magane inexplicably turned itself on and started to jump backwards when nobody was inside the vehicle. There were many witnesses to the incident, which included nine people and two police officers. The car apparently roared to life by itself, even though there was no keys in the ignition and the parking brake was engaged. One of the officers claimed that he not only heard the engine start by itself, but then witnessed it jump backwards twice up a hill. The strange happenings reached the technical coordinator of Renault in Cape Town who questioned whether such a thing could happen and claimed some people had obviously had a few too many drinks. He later blamed the car's weird behaviour on a rusty starter cable which may have caused it to short circuit and start by itself. However, it was found that the car had an even quirkier addition to its strange actions that the company would not explain where the car would start revving all by itself, as if someone was sitting inside the vehicle pumping the accelerator pedal with their foot. Fortunately, these incidents did not lead to any fatalities, but a few laughs instead. Vauxhall Astra Surrey is a county in southeast England, where there is a supposedly true legend about a haunted car that was witnessed on the A3. It was seen on December the 11th, 2002, when police continued to receive calls from drivers who described seeing a car's headlights swerving off the freeway at Burpham Road along the A3 highway. The police then hurried to the scene expecting to find a damaged vehicle, or worse, but on arriving found nothing at all, and figured someone had been playing tricks on them. 
Nevertheless, they decided to stop the car for a closer look, in case they'd missed something and someone had been seriously injured. As they went in for a more thorough search, they eventually came upon the wreck of a maroon Vauxhall Astra, nosed down in a ditch. It's no wonder they had trouble locating the vehicle, as it was covered with vegetation, and inside the car was someone who was a long way past injured. They found a body that had been there for many months. Whatever the police had discovered was no recent accident, and there is no way this car had swerved off the road that night. Yet this was the exact location that many people had described of a car losing control and leaving the A3, approximately 100 metres before the emergency ramp at Burpham. It was obvious to police that the crash had occurred long before that night due to the state of the body and the undergrowth around the car. The body was identified from dental records as that of 21-year-old Christopher Brian Chandler, who was wanted for robbery and had been on the run from the Metropolitan Police since July 16th that year. Due to the many witnesses, it appears that the spirit of the motorist found in the car was trying to call attention to the crash. So he'd used his ghostly vehicle and bright headlights to get the attention of other drivers and draw them to the scene of his fatal accident. It appears he did not want his body to remain trapped in his wrecked car, and the moment his corpse was located, he could be laid to rest. The haunting vehicle would no doubt have repeated the final scene of the accident over and over again until someone would have eventually found him. 1964 Dodge 330 The Dodge began its life with the old Orchard Beach Police Department in Maine. The car was based on a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition known as Golden Eagle. But the car didn't last long with the police department as it managed to achieve a gruesome reputation when three different officers who drove her would take the lives of their families before taking their own lives. The similarities between each of the homicides made people wonder if the car had some sort of negative energy that was passed on to the drivers. The police, obviously not wanting to tempt fate, got rid of the car and sold it to an elderly gentleman who then sold it on to a woman called Wendy Allen. Although Wendy was aware of the car's sinister reputation, she nonetheless purchased it from the old man. Wendy then went on to have her own strange experience with the vehicle. When she drove onto the highway, the car doors were suddenly spring open by themselves without anyone touching them. This would not only terrify the passengers, but was downright dangerous, because in those days, seatbelts were not necessarily fitted in the car, and having to put on your seatbelt was not mandatory by law until 1968, so passengers could have easily fallen out of the car. On other occasions, Wendy Allen claimed the steering wheel would suddenly jam. Again, that would be terrifying and dangerous if you were flying down the freeway. It seems that the car had gotten such an evil reputation in the town that the reason to get rid of the dangerous car might have been taken out of Wendy's hands. Members of a local church must have believed that the car was possessed by some evil entity, and took it upon themselves to vandalise it to stop any further danger to the community. Whether the following stories became urban legend and prone to exaggeration is not known, but it appears that the evil vehicle went on a killing spree. There is a story that the people who vandalised the vehicle all met with gruesome endings, when some of them were decapitated when the car was hit by a semi-trailer. Another person who had taken part in vandalising the Dodge had lost their lives when they were struck by lightning. After this tragedy, other church members stole the car and chopped it up. They sent the bits and pieces to various junkyards to make certain that it was never reassembled. It is hoped that nobody entered these junkyards looking for spare parts for their old Dodge, as they might get more than they bargained for. It is claimed that in its lifetime, the 1964 Dodge 330 had claimed 32 victims. <laughs>